Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting complete growing guide here on the MI Gardener channel. I know you are going to love this one because number one, it's a complete growing guide and everybody loves these, but also it's on a plant that not enough people are growing. And so I really do hope that this is going to be exciting as well as kind of inspirational to get your butt growing some of these and what your butt should be growing, <laughs> what your butt should be growing is currants and gooseberries. Now these are something that people out in, in England and, and Europe uh, primarily, they grow all the time and they're pretty much just growing crazy over there, even wild and feral. And they really have not come over here that much and it's just starting to gain popularity, but they are some of the most delicious and unique fruits possible. I mean, imagine a, imagine a grape that is mixed with a raspberry and I don't even know, a lemon pretty much, I think is a really great way to put it. It's sour, it's tart, it's sweet. It's got a, it's got like a kind of a grape exterior that pops. It's just a small little treat. It's amazing. I mean, it's so good to eat fresh as well as it's the fact that it's so antioxidant packed that it really is one of the more healthy fruits you could be growing because it's just so small and power packed. Um, you know, they always say uh, big gifts come in small packages. So it really is just a power packed snack and we love growing them. Um, but how to grow them is a completely different story. They're actually quite tricky to grow uh, because there are some care tips that if you don't follow will kill it. But pretty much if you, if you follow these care tips, they're almost impossible to kill. You know what I mean? So, uh, so if you follow this guide to a T, you're gonna have absolutely no problem but if you don't do something in this growing guide, chances are you're gonna struggle because they are kind of particular. Um, and uh, so the first thing comes with sunlight. I think this is the biggest area where people make mistakes and it's sunlight. Gooseberries and, and, and currants, which, oh, first, I wanna preface this, that gooseberries and currants are almost identical. The only thing that's different is the size of the fruit. So that's why we're putting them in the same growing guide because um, I, I just don't think, normally we'd, we'd break them up and do a gooseberry growing guide and a currant growing guide, but because they are identical fruits, pretty much, I mean, for all intents and purposes, I just call it a, all, they should all be currants and don't even call gooseberries gooseberries because they really are just a bigger fruit. So, um, so uh, basically that's all you're getting into. I know I'd get, you know, what's the difference between gooseberries and currants? Um, so I just thought I'd answer that. So back to sunlight. If you give them too much sun, they are going to fry. We have them here with the house uh, shading about, I'd say 45, 50% of the sun throughout the day. And then they get good afternoon and evening sun. So they get about five and a half hours of sun. And that is ideal. If you have uh, a, you know, a place in the garden that does not get a whole lot of sun and, and you kind of are struggling to grow tomatoes, but you can almost grow tomatoes, throw currants and gooseberries there because they are a plant that is just under the sunlight requirements of tomatoes, but any more than that and they actually begin to suffer. So you're really going to benefit in some low light situations with these. The next thing I wanted to talk about is watering and soil. The soil type really does have to be extremely well draining, extremely loose, extremely full of organic matter because the currants are very prone to drying out and you'll find that if they dry out, they tend to wither from the top down. And a lot of times we get questions, you know, hey Luke, I, I planted my, my currants or my, my gooseberries and they're just withering from the top and I've fertilized, I, I've watered. And the, and the question I always follow up with is what type of soil do you have? Um, because if it's really heavy clay soil, the, they're holding on to too much water and you're gonna be suffering from root rot. That's why you need a really well draining soil. But having that organic matter holds on to the right amount, which is very important. We water these plants about three times a week because if they dry out, they will wither. Um, and so we basically have them in uh, just a potting mix right now. And that, that's why we have them in pots because uh, they're very easy to move if the growing conditions are not super ideal. Um, we have them here because we just moved to this house in November of last year. So we are, we're kind of testing this, this spot out because we're thinking about putting um, a whole line of them along the house here if they end up doing very well. And, and you know, to my knowledge, everything I've followed with the sun, this should be an ideal spot. But we have them in pots just to kind of be a temporary holding place because uh, the last thing I want to do is plant them and then say, oh, 
shoot, there's not a good place, and then move them and damage all the roots. So it's much easier to move around in, in pots. Um, but they're not doing any, they're not being damaged or harmed in these pots, which is great. Uh, the next thing is fertilizing. You absolutely positively must fertilize twice a year. You will not have good currants or gooseberries if you don't. They're very heavy feeders in the springtime when it comes to putting on new growth. They're very fast growers and you'll find that if you do not fertilize with a very good nitrogen fertilizer, we use Trifecta Plus in everything we do here, but if you don't fertilize with like a fish emulsion or a blood meal, um, I'll let the wind pass. So if you don't, sorry about that, it's getting very gusty. So if you don't fertilize with a very good uh, blood meal or fish emulsion, you'll find that uh, they, the growth will slow down and you're really just going to be uh, hampering future fruit production. The next thing, about growing currants and gooseberries is that uh, they do need uh, a second fertilizing in the fall. Because they're perennials, you have to go back and fertilize with a, a very good phosphorus fertilizer to get them ready for winter. Um, prepping the roots for winter is something that's going to help. They are very, very, very cold hardy, but I still would rather err on the side of caution and fertilize them anyways. Plus, it just means they're gonna come back better the next year if they have a, a stronger root system because it's all that much more sugars they can store in the roots. Um, so I tend to give them, uh, again, Trifecta Plus in the fall around early October, maybe late August uh, at the earliest, um, depending on kind of how cold things are getting. Um, I feel that uh, you know mid-September to, to early October is kind of where I start fertilizing. But at the cottage, we've actually fertilized as early as late August. So um, it's really whenever the, the nights stop dro uh, start dropping below 50 degrees is when you should start prepping the plants for winter. Um, so the next thing is when it comes to uh, soil pH. They do not like acidic soil and they do not like alkaline soil. I will repeat. They do not like acidic and they do not like alkaline soil. They are extremely particular about that. And you'll find that again, if you give them something that's too acidic or too alkaline, they will begin to uh, not, well, they, they won't be able to take up the right amount of nutrients. And so they'll begin to wither and they'll have a lot of yellowing of leaves and uh, leaf chlorosis, and they'll just drop a bunch of their flowers and fruit. So what we do is we give them, obviously the potting mix is a pH balanced potting mix, but when we plant them in the ground, we're going to make sure that we give them lots of compost, which is a natural pH buffer. And that's going to ensure that they stay at right around 7.0. And that's going to make sure that the leaves stay nice and green and beautiful. Um, another thing is, and the final thing that I want to talk about is pruning. Gooseberries and, uh, and I, I do want to talk about spacing. I do want to talk about spacing. So uh, gooseberries and currants, uh, they, they have uh, very, like I said, very, very fast growth. And you'll find that they'll get about three feet tall if you neglect them. But what I like to do is I like to prune them down because you'll find that if you, by pruning kind of uh, anything above two feet, you're gonna keep them lower. They're going to provide a lot more side growth and you're going to have a lot more fruit production. If you let them grow like they'd grow naturally in the wild, they will tend to just grow really tall and have a lot of foliage, but won't focus a whole lot on fruit production. So um, I tend to keep our plants below two, uh, kind of two and a half feet. I'd never let them get above two and a half feet. I always put them lower than that. And that kind of just continuously keeps new growth forming that will provide more fruit in the future. Um, and the next thing uh, that I wanted to talk about was spacing. And that's the last thing as well that I wanted to talk about because spacing is really important. I think oftentimes, especially in their small stages like this, people just assume, oh, they'll stay nice and cute and small and dainty. False. These will grow so fast for you that you will be out of space. I mean, if, if like if I planted them about, you know, what is this, maybe 10 inches, 11 inches apart. If I planted them 10 or 11 inches apart, by the time next year came around, they would be so grown together that they'd be really suffering for airflow. And they do, they do suffer from mold and, and rot and things like that on the leaves if they don't get good airflow through. So just like you wanna give good air, airflow through your tomatoes that, have, uh, that suffer with powdery mildew, that's a, this is also a mold prone plant and you wanna give good airflow. So I would probably space them at least uh, two and a half, uh, maybe three feet apart at most. And you, I wouldn't go any further than three feet because they really don't, they don't, uh, they don't grow that wide, but you will find that fully mature, they're going to be probably a diameter of at least two and a half, three feet in 
in, uh, in diameter. So definitely something that you want to consider early on when you're planting these is to kind of foreshadow for that growth in the future. And that's really all there is to growing currants and gooseberries. They're super easy, super delicious. Try them in jellies, jams, preserves. Not sure what the difference is between all three of those, but try them in all of them and also try them fresh. You really cannot beat the flavor. They're so delicious. And oh, the final thing that I want to talk about is the variety. Oh my gosh, if you love a plant with variety. We have here, we have a, uh, this is a, uh, this is a Ravada red currant. We have a, uh, a Tixia white gooseberry. We have a uh, Hinamaki, Hina 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 probably butchered that, but Hinamaki red gooseberry. We have a Pixwell gooseberry. That's a white, that's another white variety. We have a, uh, a Blanco white currant. We have a uh, pink champagne currant. And then we also, in, in another part of the garden, just in a corner uh, where it gets real good sun exposure, but not too much again, about five and a half hours, it is a black currant. So we have so many different types of currants and gooseberries, and that allows us to really eat the rainbow just from one variety of plant. And we love that because it just gives us so much different diversity with our plants. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll talk to you later. See ya. Bye.